Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for joining us today. Welcome back to the NWR Vantage Point Conference and to the Ordira Investor Presentation. Uh, joining us today, we've got Ordira MD and CEO, Dr. James Fielding. Um, I'll pass you across in a moment to James to present the Ordira story. Uh, we'll have an intro to the business today, followed by an opportunity for Q&A. If you would like to ask a question during James's presentation, please type it into the Q&A panel in the Zoom app. Um, so to kick things off, I'll hand over now to Ordira MD and CEO, Dr. James Fielding. Go ahead, James. Thanks for having me, Tim, and a pleasure to be speaking to everyone. Really looking forward to today and especially the Q&A at the end, which I always thoroughly enjoy. So to kick things off, I think we should start with the basics. Ordira is a hearing health technology company driven by two complementary revenue streams that has a foundation in our proprietary technology and our access to niche markets. Under the Ordira brand, we sell headphones accessories primarily into audiology clinics and have partnerships with global brands and we're on the cusp of significant global expansion. Since 2019, we've captured all major international clinics and large independent clinic groups in Australia. And through those relationships, we've developed a very strong pipeline. This is supplemented by our direct-to-consumer retail channels that primarily utilises NDIS funding. On the other side, in our technology business, we have core technology platforms that are being licensed to strong third-party brands to be able to utilise their go-to-market strengths and on the back of that, provide positive cash flow as we look to licence and contract manufacture. Looking at, the recent, looking at the recent activity in the company, we we're proud to announce in our recent quarterly update, our growth in revenue, our growth in cash receipts, and our reduction in expenditure and cash burn as we streamline our operations. As I mentioned previously, heading into the international stage in recent news was the addition of Austria and USA alongside partner WS Audiology, as well as the preparation of launch in our Amplify and Global Distribution deal into a number of European countries and first sales with the DeMott Group in the USA. On the AUA technology side, we announced the signing of a cooperative agreement with Clinico following their strategic investment at the end of calendar 22. In AUA technology, we announced our engagement by our leading musical instrument company was on track to meet development pipeline for product manufacture in the first half of FY24. Yeah, okay. Moving to the Aldera side of the business, which was the foundation from back in 2015 and our hardware and software solutions for the hearing industry. Now, this is a good chance to bring you up to speed on the core technology offering that we have with Udira, which is our personalized sound products. The core of this technology is focusing on the part of an audio experience that we think matters the most, which is what a person can actually hear. So we offer through our technology, the chance for people to experience a world-class entertainment experience, regardless of what their hearing is like. And this appeals most commonly to people who know they have a significant change in their hearing profile. These people find themselves in audiology clinics looking for hearing solutions. And this industry is dominated by a handful of multinationals who are very well established and account for up to 80% of the global audiology retail industry. Our products come in the form of over-ear noise cancelling Bluetooth headphones, the ones I'm using right now to speak with you. And our secret source is our personalised sound technology that is achieved either by the user performing their own hearing check to optimise their sound output or working with their audiologist to use an existing hearing profile that was determined in the clinic and flashing that into these headphones. Now, this market focusing on the hearing loss industry has been estimated by the WHO to be reaching 1.9 billion people by 2030 who identify as needing a solution to combat the impact and the quality of life from their hearing loss. And as mentioned previously, we've captured a working relationship with these large dominant global players in the Australian market 
which acts as a microcosm for the global stage. And as you can see here, the global market, as is common in many markets, represents a vast expansion on clinic sites, which I'll be getting to as we start to explore the amount of the market we've captured to date. We're currently stocked in six countries, and we have a financial year 24 pipeline of an 11 additional countries, which is underpinned by a relationship with Amplifon and a rollout into the European markets. I mentioned briefly previously that we've begun trading in Austria with WS Audiology, and this was our first push into the European space over the last 12 months, preparing and optimizing our product to be ready for the European market. We've also begun working in the Taiwanese market with the Clinico Group, who were the market leader in that space. And that led to the signing of the cooperative agreement, as well as a strategic investment, which gives us great confidence in this area. Moving now to AUA technology, a part of the business that was always on the roadmap from company inception, but we're about to hit our first true milestone of incorporating our technology into a third party brand, something that we're incredibly excited about because of the scale and access to market that it brings. AUA technology uses the core of our R&D capabilities, which is hardware, firmware, and software development underpinned by our strong IP portfolio to be producing products in the Odira product pipeline, but now leveraging that technology and product development capability to bring us really strong strategic opportunities outside of the audiology industry. The first of these is with a large global music instrument brand in which we have entered into a product development agreement that has two primary revenue elements, an engineering fee for services where we actually bring the product to life and then contract manufacturing and licensing, which is the scalable high growth opportunity as we reach high volume consumer markets with global reach and have that truly scalable outcome that leverages the go-to-market strength of a global brand. We also have a product development agreement signed with Clinico Inc. on the back of a strategic partnership with Clinico's CEO, Mr. David Lin, to develop a series of healthy hearing earbuds, which be our first in-ear application of our technology, something that we've been thinking about and working towards for a number of years, which is on track for completion in the next 18 months with a focus in Taiwan and China to be exclusively distributed alongside Taiwanese market leader Clinico. As we expand beyond that, the partnerships really can take on a global reach once the product is developed. Thank you very much. And I look forward to your questions. Excellent presentation, James. Thank you for that. Um, We've had a few questions come in, so let's hop straight into them. Um, you, you did touch on this just at the end of your preso there, James, but um, a couple of questions from Gavin. He's asking how the new product development is going with Clinico. And um, also, um, can you talk to how European sales have been going through the global partners to date? Thanks. So regarding the Clinico product development, that's been progressing incredibly well. The team just got back from another trip up into Taiwan and China to sit with our chip manufacturers and get our product development pipeline underway. So that's progressing nicely and is on track to meet the original plan that we'd set with David Lehner and when he was ready to be releasing that product through his clinic network. On the European side, we've had first movement just recently into Austria. So since really July of last year, uh, we've been preparing the product to be legally available and scalable in Europe. And so the first product partnership with WSA clinic groups in Austria was off to a good start with them taking a nice allotment through their entire clinic range, which is 21 sites. So not as, uh, as large as Amplifon, but for them to be taking the plunge and getting going is very exciting. And those products will be available for sale in those clinics over the next couple of weeks. And then the goal is to get behind it and build up that momentum and turn them into repeat sale customers as a foundation for the other clinics in the area. 
Very good. Um, question from Oliver, who's an investor based in Holland. Um, he's yeah. uh, asking how the Europe, so w w where Benelux sits within the European launch plans. Can you can you talk about mm -hmm. Benjamin Netherlands uh, and Luxembourg? Yeah, so we actually began some conversations with Benelux distributors a few months ago, which is very exciting. And Netherlands is on the roadmap within the larger Amplifon ecosystem. I'm not able to uh, give guidance around when individual countries will be coming a market because that's yet to be announced and based on the decisions of the individual countries. But considering the potential for government reimbursement and the focus that the Netherlands have on assistive listening devices, it's definitely a market that we see as an incredible opportunity. So we're looking to partner with strong players in that space and then use these core agreements and these core partnerships to then expand out through the region, but it's certainly on the roadmap, Oliver, and we're quite excited to get across. It's also a very beautiful part of the world. I can certainly second that. Good stuff, James. Um, so um, just taking a step back from, I guess, the, the, the latest developments, can you talk to how you, your technology differs from the competing alternatives out there mm -hmm. in terms of the effectiveness and the user experience as well and how that translates into the market advantage that you guys have? Certainly. So the core differentiator that we have is the ability to change the way headphones sound to meet your individual hearing profile. And there are other competitors who have the same goal and the same technology outcome they're trying to reach. We achieve this outcome using medical style testing that has its foundations in the audiology industry. And in doing so, we're able to create a very strong credibility in the space, which has earned just the right to be most often the only headphones stocked in the audiology clinics that are stocking our products, something that we're very proud of. And this differentiation also has the government backing by allowing us to have NDIS registration, as well as accreditation with the Hearing Services Program and the Department of Veterans Affairs, which gives over a million people in Australia the chance to be purchasing our headphones using their government funding. And it's our job to get out, promote and reach those people. And the best way to do that is in audiology clinics who are seeing people who are eligible for these government funding opportunities every day. So by getting access to the clinics, we get access to the people that can use the funding. And that's really fueling this growth that we've seen and that growth in revenue and cash flow over the last 12 months on the back of this higher awareness, which is why we've chosen the audiology industry as our niche market, because it lets us reduce the amount of product competition and really focus on a core segment of people that are in actively looking for solutions like ours. Good stuff, thanks, James. Um, how significant could the AUA technology division become for the business? And to what extent are you gonna focus on contract manufacturing and licensing in the years ahead? So we believe it has a chance to become an incredibly significant contributor to both above the line and our bottom line. So it's something that we see as really driving profitability into the future. I think what's underpinning that is the fact that we're partnering with really strong brands and utilizing their go to market at a scale that is far greater than we can achieve in the time that we've been in market. So we're talking about well-entrenched market leaders who are using our technology and going beyond that into this contract manufacturing. So while the margins are obviously lower in that space than in direct wholesale, the scalability of it is dependent on the strength of their brand and their resources. So as long as we develop high quality products, utilizing cutting edge technology, we position ourselves to scale alongside and it becomes a straight cash generator at high volumes, which is obviously something that we're incredibly excited about. Absolutely. And um, so as part of that, is, is the potential music industry technology revenue still on track for late in 2023? It is, yes. We've come back. So part of the recent trips was aligning with these uh, cutting edge technology partners of ours Taiwan and China to bring these products to life and everything so far is on track, which is incredibly exciting. We are, of course, driven by the go-to-market plans of our third 
party partners, so uh, the music industry brand that we're launching with, we're dependent on their go-to-market plan, but that go-to-market plan is still on track for the second half of FY24. So we need to have the product on the shelf for them to sell it. So we have a lead in to their commercial launch. Yeah, sounds good. Um, looking to the home market, um, can you comment on the revenue growth trajectory from the Australian audiology clinics? Yeah, so aside from going into specifics on our revenue growth targets, there's definitely a lot more room to grow in the Australian space. And that's by virtue of really optimising the partners we already have and then bringing the wider clinic groups into operation. So when we on board and we bring in a new chain, it's very exciting. It creates you know, sales opportunity for us to be in an additional, say, 100 sites, 150 sites, but they do take time to ingrain our new product offering into their systems and we see it build up over a number of years as it starts to strengthen. And so as we've started to build up new clinic groups, we see that revenue will start to come in in a trailing process. So we're confident that there's still an awful lot of room to grow. And that's outside of the NDIS, which for us has been something that we really enjoy, something that we've put a lot of energy into ensuring the product is high quality, but the market capture of NDIS has been very secondary to audiology clinic growth. So as we've started to create that strong foundation in the clinic, we can put more resource into the NDIS, which is an enormous opportunity in home saw. Absolutely. Um, and so what kind of news flow should investors expect from Odira as the company rolls out its products across Europe? And also, which of these countries do you think represent the most exciting near-term opportunities? Mm. So the parts of the European market that we're most excited about are alongside Amplifon, who have four of the largest audiology channels in the world being Italy, France, Germany, and Spain, each with clinic sizes roughly equivalent to the entire Australian market. And so entry into those markets is a key catalyst of growth for us and something that we're incredibly excited about. As we start to look for what those catalysts will mean, it is important to understand that each of these countries will choose their own launch plan. So we get very excited about the opportunity of launching in Italy with an Italian group like Amplifon. And you know we can't wait for that to happen as fast as possible, but for them, it's likely to be trial sites like we saw in Australia. So you get a small opportunity, prove it out, a larger opportunity, prove it out, then you're properly entrenched. So we see that happening as it did in Australia. And it took a few years to really get fully up and running with a number of these groups. And so while entry into the market is incredibly encouraging and exciting, the real benefit and the flow through in revenue, we don't expect to be an immediate outcome of these product launches. We understand that we need to walk before we can run. And so we're prepared to be doing that. Sounds like it. Good stuff. Um, and so with cash receipts and cost reductions both pointing in the right direction now for Ordera. Uh, what further developments are necessary in order for the company to generate positive cash flow? I think what we're looking to be doing in this space is adding in some of these international markets because we have committed resources into that space in anticipation of the revenue coming through. So once each of these markets is starting to wipe its own face, it'll certainly go a long way to creating that that break even point. And then the addition of the AUA technology contributes significantly to that outcome as well. So the faster that our third party brands can be reordering and getting the volumes up, uh, the faster we'll be getting that contribution at the bottom line. What's to look forward to there. Um, look, uh, we've got, that's all the time we've got time for now. So um, on behalf of the company, I'd really like to thank everyone for tuning in. Um, we really appreciate everyone's interest in, in Ordera. Um, if you've got a question that we didn't get to today, please reach out and James and his management team will be happy to discuss further offline. Um, and we'll also make this video recording available uh, online at the NWI YouTube account. Really looking forward to the opportunity to talk to you all again. And James, I might pass across to you now for any closing comments. Thank you very much. I think it's important to reiterate that we're incredibly excited about what's coming up. We've learned a lot over the last few years being a new entrant to the ASX and we really appreciate the opportunity and look forward to what we can build. Excellent. Thanks, James. Thanks, everyone. Chat to you again soon. Thank you.